Good evening. Welcome to Fishery. Today we are going to be looking at tubs and raising your own fish food that's living and free. One of the most important things that I can say about breeding fish is feeding them live food. And it's not so much for the adults. You can give them protein with frozen food or whatever you want. But especially with tiny little species like Sundadanios, you want to make sure that they are in the mood. See how their colors are just getting brighter? They're getting in the mood to hunt. But more importantly, they're seeing with their eyes, their tiny little eyes, which have great vision, they're seeing that, you know what, if we spawn right now, our babies will have food. And that combined with different water temperatures, water changes, TDS changes, pH changes, tells them when it's time to have babies. So the first step, along with fattening up the females so that they can produce lots of eggs, is also getting them in this mood to know my babies will be taken care of. The same is true of a lot of pencil fish and tetras. Uh, it doesn't hurt with bettas either. But these uh, pencil fish, they're coloring up nicely. And let's go take a look at how I gathered all this live food and what the ponds are up to this year. So, what do we have going on here? Well, what we have going on here is spring. Spring has sprung, and we've got the tubs. Oh yeah, this tub is in its second year. This is the tub that I did not in, I, I didn't use any resurrection jar or add any this or that to it. This is the tub that nature built. This is the one that the wind, whatever happened, whatever blew in on the wind, that's what ended up in here. And I am happy to say, last year this also looked similar, but this year it's even more diverse, especially under the microscope. It is cuckoo bananas bonkers uh, how many species of little critters there are in here. What's also fascinating is that there are no mosquitoes. It's a little early for mosquitoes here. There are no mosquito larvae in here. There's these Daphnia, which the real quick ones like this guy here, that's a Cyclops, whereas that's a Daphnia rowing there right in the center. That's a Daphnia. And the Cyclops are the ones that move around quickly. And if you see a female, you can tell when she has eggs, there's another Cyclops moving around. They kind of look more like a little comet. Uh, and the bigger Daphnia move around down there more gracefully. But you can see all the newborn uh, cyclops up at the top too. Those little dots, the little, just looks like dust. Those are all little babies and other forms of paramecium, little teeny food sources for the fish. So I just got a bottle and a filter media mesh bag. Uh, you can get nets or strainers, all sorts of things, cheesecloth. That'll all work. And you just take a turkey baster, suck them up, uh, especially right after dusk. If you use a flashlight, they are super drawn to it. I mean, look at how rich this tub is. And I draw from this almost every night to feed my nano fish, my little fish, anything like betta size or smaller. Now, you may be asking, okay, well, what happened to the other tubs? How did they do? Well, here's one that I uh, inoculated with creek water. And you can see there is more diversity, less density <laughs> of the little critters. And there are, look at this, look at all the mosquito larvae which I have no idea why, like why they're taking over, yet they're nowhere to be found on the other side. Is it a parasite? Are these not the same mosquitoes that I'm used to seeing? I mean, what's going on? That I think is more uh, similar to like a brine shrimp or eating some sort of protein films or something, because they definitely have different colors. Some are, there, there's a brown one right down in there. And that's one bucket. Here's another bucket where we've got uh, some filamentous algae growing. And I mean, again, the, look at this matrix of uh, algae, and there's some duckweed that made it through all the frosts and things. There's some water mites at the top and little aphid-type critters. And I think we're done with the frost and freeze uh, for this season, probably, but uh, not 100% sure. Anyways, I just wanted to give you guys a big old update on just how beautiful this is looking. I mean, look at that column. Look at that beam of light going down into the food. They go all the way to the bottom, and... I can get at these guys all day long. Right now there's uh, magnolia leaves, and magnolias is what they're called, originally Japanese. And uh, they're all through here. Every once in a while I'll get rid of some of that algae 
because they actually like uh, single cell freeform algae more than the slimy uh, algae that sticks together, the filamentous. So I'll allow this kind of hairy algae along the edges to chill and because they hide in there and they seem to have their uh, clutches of babies in there. And then as the sun goes down, they all kind of show up. Also during sunrise, they kind of migrate from one side of the tank to the other. And there are leaves in here, but the difference in this tank is I also put, uh, I put the lava rock and I also put um, crushed coral in here, which is buffering it. So this, t this water runs a little more neutral with a higher TDS. And seemingly, there are no mosquitoes, even though it's a way bigger tank. So maybe we have something even more monstrous eating every single mosquito. I kind of doubt it, with all these other little critters. Or maybe there's something going on with pH and mosquitoes. And uh, over here, we've got other tubs. This is a super acidic tub. And in here, um, we've got more like green water. So this is more like stuff that I can feed that big tub if I wanted to. But I haven't just because I don't want to cross-contaminate the project, so to speak. Uh, but this I will also bring inside and feed to fish on the first four or five days of their life I'll bring it up to room temperature and aerate it inside under a light for 24 to 72 hours Depending on um, absolutely nothing other than my madness and uh, see here look at all the here's some nice females uh, Those are the females right there see them with their eggs on their back By their, where their tail is where's eggs versus no eggs. Well, that is a cyclops and uh they're just scooting around doing their thing in here, kind of all hanging out up top, actually. And in the little curls of the leaves. See, there's the eggs. You can actually see the, the body is kind of a tan color there, and the eggs are that gray color. If you look up close, there's about 30 to 50 eggs all together in those little pouches. And then they're born, and then they all get together and do their thing. Now, over the hard frost and everything, the pond snails, from the aquarium hobby, mind you, have survived in here. Also... Look at with the debris floating on top, how thick that is with those little creatures. So if you are trying to come up with a way to raise, you know, organic live food for your fish, this is a pretty darn good one. Now, there's also some sort of weird little water nymphs in here, and I don't know what they are. They look very similar to mosquitoes, but they must be something different like a mayfly or, you know, they're not mayflies, but something similar because they spin like a little pinwheel when they move around. And uh, they have kind of longer snouts uh, than, rather than like a little forked tail and, a, and whiskers, kind of like the mosquito larvae do. So, I'm going to wrap it up. We're going to end on a note of, yeah, there goes one right there. I'm going to end on a note of uh, feeding, collect it out of that tub with the turkey baster and the flashlight. I'll show you what we got collected and then we'll feed it and that'll be that. Bing bada boom. All right, here is about 15 to 20 minutes of uh, using the turkey baster. I got a whole lot out of there. It is about 2 grams wet. Now, dried, that's a whole lot less. These guys are probably 80% water by weight. But for a little tiny nano fish and for uh, baby fry, it's an absolutely great meal. 51 to 56 percent protein with these uh, particular foods here and lots of vitamins nutrients and color enhancers plus it also gets that uh, hunting instinct going so they'll chase these things around they'll move around and that's really going to encourage their growth much faster so we'll go inside and we'll feed these off as soon as they get up to room temperature or so all right, back in the fish room. Here we are with some metallic live bears and some pygmy sword tails, even though they don't have sword tails. Uh, the pygmy sword tails don't really have a sword tail, but they do love live food, and it fattens them up very quickly. Also, it keeps the fry growing really quick so that they don't get predated by the adults as much. Uh, and then I also like to feed all my bettas, pencil fish, and uh, also any nano fish, chili rasboras, things like that, CPDs. I like to feed them live food. Uh, so it definitely makes a difference. That helps them put on a lot of weight. And also, you know, then they'll forage more in between, gets their metabolism going. And that's, uh, that's about all. I just wanted to share all this with you. And that, that concludes my essay as to why my neighbors hate me and think I'm growing mosquitoes for fun. Which, by the way, feed the mosquito larvae to your fish too. Like my rainbow fish, my angel fish, tetras, anything medium-sized absolutely loves that stuff. 
And it's pretty uh, low risk as far as parasites go with these feeding things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.